heard about the gender gap that exists in the science, engineering, technology, engineering, and mathematics subjects, otherwise known as STEM. However, from a broad perspective, we see that we see that women make up we see that women make up nearly 50 percent of the degrees obtained and the workforce in the STEM fields, showing no signs of a large gap at all. However, as we look closer at the different sectors of STEM, we start to see where the gap is. Take the medical field as an example. We see that women make up more than 50% of the workforce and degrees of change. In comparison, in the computer science and engineering fields, women make up only 20% of the degrees and the workforce. This shows where the gap truly really lies. Well, now that we know the gap, where the gap truly really lies, how can we find a solution to this? Well, we must start from the, we must start from the roots of this problem. And that starts with the way we are treated differently as boys and girls when we are young. As a young girl, I vividly remember a day in grade six when we were just doing our annual hour of code activities. It was just your simple block code, drag and drop type of thing. And for me, it was quite simple, to say the least, and quite easy for me to finish. So I was the first one in my class to finish. But more significantly, this actually stunned the teacher as she had expected a boy to finish ahead. Um, she, had, she had expected a boy to finish ahead of me. And clearly, as members of the society, we are predisposed to believe that boys are more fit for these fields than girls are. It is with this different mindset that we are treated with that truly affects us when it comes down to career choices. So, a few years later, I actually find myself at a pretty well-known STEM program in Toronto, where I decided to join the robotics team. And in the robotics club at the school, I was the only girl in a club of 20 members. Now, this was pretty daunting, but I didn't really care at the time. But more importantly, I actually received all the easy tasks, despite not lacking any of the skills in comparison to the boys. Yet, I became too insecure to speak up for myself. I was scared to make a fool of myself. And these weren't only shaped by my insecure personality, but more so by the fact that society makes girls so susceptible to insecurities in these male-dominated fields. So after this dire situation, I decided to take a quick break from exploring computer science and related things, and, and engineering related things. However, I soon realized that my passion truly lies in this field. So I decided to seek more confidence for myself, and I did this by talking to teachers who empowered me and peers who supported me through the process. And I was really, as I received more support, I was really able to achieve more in this field and deepen my passion for the field. I started attending hackathons, I started making cool projects, and I even got invited to be a member of the girls programming team at the school. And my attitude really turned into a, hey, I can do cool things too type of thing. So fast forward to, Fall of 2018, when I came to Richmond, Ohio as a new grade 11 student, I was quite excited as I expected our school to be a quite STEM focused school. I mean, we had the STEAM program, we had a variety of involvement in computing, mathematics, and science contests. So I was quite excited. However, as I walked into my AP computer science classroom on the first day of school, I was astonished to see that there were only two other girls in the class when I looked around. And the same thing occurred in my computer engineering class this semester. There, there were only two girls, including myself. So I thought of this gap as uh, this lack of girls in these subjects as a result of the lack of motivation and empowerment of girls to pursue these subjects. With some deeper thought, I really felt like we as a school could do something to bridge these gaps and really encourage girls to go into the field. And with that thought in mind, and looking back on my past experiences, I came up with the three most important things to, that we can do to close this gap. And those three things are opportunity, empowerment, and motivation. So let's start off with opportunity. Opportunity isn't something that's always available to us. Sometimes we have to seek it for ourselves. But opportunity is what allows us to enter the community in this field. It allows girls to engage with these subjects and really find their interests. Once we have the opportunity to do something, we seek empowerment. Empowerment is like the doormat. It's what welcomes us into the community. And in this case, girls typically lack the empowerment to pursue their dreams in this field. Girls lack the confidence in themselves to feel like they fit in or that they too can excel in these fields. But once we have empowerment from teachers, 
and role models, then we really need motivation. Motivation can come in a variety of different uh, forms. It can come in the form of encouragement from our teachers, from our peers. It can also just come from the fact that we are so passionate about something. And motivation is what really allows us to stay in the field. It allows girls to really engage themselves and see more opportunity for themselves in the field. It allows us to delve deeper. With these three, three things in mind, I truly believe that girls too will essentially have the confidence to believe in themselves that they too can excel in the field, even though it's male dominating, and even though these fields are male dominating. Um, and perhaps at this point, gender will no longer be the definition of our careers and interests. Although we may not be able to provide all of these as a school right away, or maybe we can't provide all of them, we surely can make a difference in, our, in these fields. And we can definitely start with environment in our school. And at the end of the day, I want you to realize that these three things don't only apply to my dreams of closing the gap in the, STEM, in the computer science and engineering subjects, but rather, they also apply to us as students. By seeking the opportunity for ourselves, by empowering others and receiving empowerment, and by garnering motivation and motivating those around us, we can truly make our school an even more flourishing place for ourselves. And most significantly, if there's something that I could give you to take away from my talk as an individual, it would be to persist through the challenges you face and embrace them as motivation to pursue your dreams. Thank you. Okay, so now what is going to be happening is we're going to be taking a 10 minute intermission. But wait, before you get up, three things. One, who's over there. Two, make sure you stick around because there's going to be one last TED talk. And three, make sure you stick around if you enter the Apple AirPods raffle. As I've been saying, you must be here to accept that. Uh, with that being said, 10 minute intermission. We'll be back in a by 10. Okay.